Welcome back to Hot Wallet. I'm Rosemarie Miller. Senator Lummis and Senator Gillibrand created the most comprehensive legislation on crypto back in June, titled the Responsible Financial Innovation Act. In light of FTX filing for bankruptcy and FTX's now resigned CEO, Sam Bankman Fried's instant fall from grace for using customers' assets, there have been multiple calls for regulation in the crypto industry. Today, we have Senator Lummis joining us to speak more on the FTX contagion and when we can expect more crypto regulation. Thank you so much for joining us today, Senator Lummis. How are you feeling? Very well. Thanks for uh, letting me be on your new program, Rosemary. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Senator, we're going to hop right into this FTX nightmare. So what started as a Twitter feud early last week quickly escalated to FTX filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And I'm wondering, what has the conversation been like in Washington following the collapse? Well, there's been a lot of chatter. Uh, we've had a few uh, committee hearings to try to digest what happened and what Congress should do about it. And fortunately, uh, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand and I have a bill uh, that is in the Senate Finance Committee that's very comprehensive. It would address uh, the spectrum of uh, crypto assets, uh, how they would be regulated and integrated to, uh, into uh, our banking system uh, that is regulated, or at least our banking regulators, uh, and uh, how uh, that bill uh, needs now to receive uh, attention uh, sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. And I I'm going to get back to your bill, but I I'm curious, Congress has been having discussions, and are, is there any finger pointing going on to either of the regulators? CFTC Chair Rostin Benham, he said that SBF has met with uh, met with them in, in the CFTC multiple times, and Gary Gensler, he had his 45-minute Zoom call with SBF on March 23rd. Is anyone pointing fingers to either of the regulators? This all happened right under their nose while they were pursuing other cases that didn't have quite or not nearly the downfall. Well, FTX is 135 different entities, uh, only a handful of which, or very few of which, um, are domesticated in the United States. So here you have a company based in the Bahamas, uh, no CFO, uh, no board of directors, 135 entities. Um, they held no Bitcoin uh, at the time of their collapse. Uh, and so there you have the uh, Commodity Futures Trading Commission component of the asset uh, not in play. Uh, there were Bitcoin liabilities on, on the books, uh, but not uh, they weren't holding any Bitcoin. So um, it, it was very complicated, very murky. Uh, of course, we don't know whether the SEC uh, was or is uh, building a case against uh, FTX. They might have been building it already. Um, the uh, Gary Gensler at the SEC uh, had uh, come out not in support of the bill in the uh, Senate Ag Committee, uh, which uh, FTX um, had a hand in uh, in drafting. Uh, so it, it's I just don't see any advantage uh, to pointing fingers uh, at uh, uh, at regulators. Uh, there's certainly no advantage to pointing fingers at the fact that uh, FTX uh, political contributions, especially to members of the Democrat Party, were massive. Uh, it, it's not like uh, Republicans it's, and pe people like me uh, saw uh, what they were doing as so massively uh, fraudulent. Uh, so. Uh, pointing fingers is not the right approach to addressing this. We need to roll up our state sleeves uh, and um, uh, 
take these bills off the back burner and really scrub them uh, in light of not only the FTX debacle, uh, but the ripple effect that uh, the FTX debacle and bankruptcy is having around the industry. So, Senator, you mentioned the bill that SBF was rallying behind and SEC Chair Gary Gensler wasn't really supporting the bill. And and I, I wonder, do you believe your bill is better than the other crypto regulation bills that are out there? Well, I, I think that uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that attention will turn to the Lummis Gillibrand bill so we can integrate uh, some of the lessons learned from FTX so we can learn some of the changes that uh, would make the bill better. We can tweak it. For example, uh, some at the SEC have identified some possible unintended consequences associated with uh, definitions in Lummis uh, Gillibrand. So I look forward to meeting with staffers at the uh, SEC uh, to tighten up our definition so those unintended possible consequences uh, are removed from the bill. Uh, we have tighter definitions that the regulators are more comfortable with. Um, and if um, Lummis Gillibrand um, uh, departs from the philosophical uh, issues that regulators want to see. We can have that as a debate. Uh, if if uh, Senator Gillibrand and I want to go ahead with our philosophical approach, uh, we can debate it out in the committees. Uh, but uh, we sure want to make sure that the language uh, is, uh, is tightened up and is appropriate uh, to continue to innovate in this space and in the United States to allow for that innovation, but at the same time, have a regulatory framework that protects consumers, has adequate disclosures, uh, and the things that the SEC does so well. And we wanna make sure that Bitcoin and anything else that looks like uh, a commodity uh, that is sufficiently decentralized, that is trustless, uh, that has the scarcity associated with being a good store of value, uh, is regulated. And as these assets begin to uh, morph technologically into means of exchange, into currencies, uh, the regulatory agencies that deal with means of exchange, like the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, may need also to weigh in. Stable coins is an area where uh, I know the administration has expressed an interest in seeing some regulation. Senator Toomey has a bill uh, that would uh, deal with the regulation of non-bank issuers of stable coins. Senator Gillibrand and I uh, have in our bill uh, bank uh, issuers of stable coins. So um, the discussion pieces, the models, the legislation is out there. Now we need to uh, work on it. We need to have the hearings. We need to have the markups. We need to get these bills uh, through the Congress in 2023, hopefully, uh, so our regulators have direction uh, from the United States Congress uh, on how to regulate, uh, and then they can roll up their sleeves and, and get about that, that work. Can we get a time frame on that? Do you think crypto regulation is happening soon or has FTX and Luna just made policymakers really hesitant about the crypto space? Oh, it, it's definitely true that uh, policymakers are hesitant about uh, the crypto space, uh, but uh, it's a huge industry and we need to uh, regulate it. It's time to address it, it's time to learn more about it. Uh, we can stick our heads in the sand and say, uh, this stuff is dangerous, so let's pretend it doesn't exist. Uh, it's not going away. Uh, and so we need to figure out how to uh, regulate it when it needs to be regulated, uh, let it run and stand alone so the innovation can occur at times when it poses no consumer risk uh, but when it poses consumer risk, we need adequate cons d disclosure and consumer protection. Okay, so, so how has this collapse impacted your bill, the positioning of your bill? Is it now 
ahead of the others or or are they looking at other bills more closely now? Well, I do think there's an effort in the Senate Ag Committee to um, rewrite uh, the, the Stabenow-Bozeman bill uh, in a way that uh, tightens it up and sort of removes uh, some of the uh, looser approaches to regulating that had been advocated uh, for by FTX. We need to make sure uh, that, um, for example, the fact that FTX was so vocally advocating for legislation to offer exchange, broker, custody, margin, and other activities in the same entity, that that does not occur. Uh, we should not have or allow uh, the bundling of exchange broker custody uh, margin and those types of activities within one entity. Um, and there are limitations within our, uh, our, our banking industry regarding these affiliate transactions that we should apply uh, to uh, cryptocurrencies, for example. Uh, Lummis Gillibrand also would prohibit these affiliate agencies from having uh, the ability to bundle those uh, uh, regulated activities. So we can do two things. One, we can, we can look at legislation that is in committees now. Through the lens of the FTX bankruptcy, what did they do to um, take down their own company uh, and uh, ruin the value associated with uh, consumer assets within those companies. And how can we make sure that the legislation we pass would prevent that kind of thing from happening in the future, uh, but in the same way assure that uh, we're creating a regulatory environment that will allow us to regulate those businesses because we want them resident in the United States. As you know, uh, FTX had about 135 business entities. They were based in primarily in the Bahamas. Um, there were, were, was at least one, maybe more uh, of their uh, 135 business entities that was based in the US. Um, and so we're, we have an ability to uh, regulate that one. Um, the Bahamas has taken FTX into receivership and will begin to uh, unravel the situation through the Bahamas regulation. But, you know, if the United States gets so prescriptive that um, crypto entities are all run offshore, uh, it diminishes our ability to protect consumers. Uh, so that's why we need to find the sweet spot between adequate regulation in the United States. So consumers of protection and the, uh, the innovators understand the rules of the road, but they can still innovate here. Uh, that allows uh, for uh, the United States to remain uh, the robust uh, financial leader in the world. Speaking of consumer protection, I think about in your home state of Wyoming, the Custodia Bank, the Federal Reserve has been holding up the, the master account application. And wouldn't that theoretically help consumers by eliminating intermediaries where they could store their, their cryptocurrency in a bank? Lose some of that risk. Well, the deal is though, Wyoming's regulatory uh, regime and statutory framework uh, are extremely tight. Uh, we are, uh, in fact, a model <laughs> for uh, how these assets should be regulated at the federal level. Uh, our bank examination manuals that require uh, compliance with Know Your Customer and uh, Bank Secrecy Act and so many federal regulations are very carefully laid out. I mean, there's like 750 pages of bank regulation manuals that would apply to uh, custodia and other uh, special purpose depository institutions that are created under Wyoming law. Uh, the, um, the safety and soundness 
uh, that is embedded in Wyoming law regulation and banking manuals and our supervision is second to none. Uh, and so, uh, quite frankly, the, the converse is true uh, to what your assumption is. Wyoming's re uh, statutory and regulatory framework uh, would create an environment where uh, consumer assets are more adequately protected uh, than anything is now at the federal level uh, that is based specifically uh, in cryptocurrency. FTX could not have happened if it had been organized as a special purpose depository institution under Wyoming's legislative and regulatory framework. Are you doing anything to push for Custodia getting getting their master account application? Yes, I worked all last year to try to uh, figure out uh, where within the black hole that is the uh, Federal Reserve, uh, the hang up was, you know, I would go, I got ping pong balled back and forth between um, the, um, the Fed and uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City. Uh, one would point the other, the finger at the other saying, oh, uh, Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City uh, and Esther George have all the authority they need, they can do this. And then we would talk to them and they would say, oh, no, we we're waiting for the guidance out of the, the, the Fed in, in Washington, D.C. And this just went on uh, for well over a year, uh, even though all of the compliance uh, and uh, requirements of the Fed uh, were in place. So um, I filed, uh, along with several other uh, members of Congress, an amicus brief in Custodia's lawsuit uh, against the Fed, uh, and it's currently in federal district court. Could you give us a timeline on when we could expect to see some progress? <laughs> uh, uh, I wish that uh, time frame was, uh, you know, T minus 14 months or more. Uh, I, I just don't know. This is uh, uh, this has been held in abeyance so long uh, that there is literally no explanation. There's no explanation. Wow. So uh, I, I do wonder: is it even sustainable to have a bank that a banking model that doesn't deal with yields or interest? I mean, how would Custodia even make money? Well, uh, I personally don't know what their business model does, uh, but um, it, it, it is a depository institution only. Uh, and so it is not commingling uh, the money at custodies with other activities. Uh, and uh, that unique special purpose institution uh, allows us to assure uh, safety and soundness uh, of its customers' money with adequate disclosures and consumer protections. That's what I care about. I want to make sure that business entities uh, that are custodying these assets uh, are protecting the customer's assets. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, how they make money, whether it's just as a, uh, a fee on depositors, uh, is uh, as long as it's adequately disclosed, is, is a matter between uh, custodia and uh, its customers. Senator Lemus, let's let's switch gears a little bit. Back to FTX. <laughs> SPF has been known to meet with various pol policymakers, and I'm wondering how many times did you meet with him, and what was the tone of your meetings? Well, I met with him in my office once. Uh, I it was an introductory meeting. Um, and uh, he had uh, several of his uh, staff with him. Uh, so um, I think it was during just a time when he was making a rounds, the rounds on Capitol Hill, trying to meet people who are um, interested uh, in digital assets and are in a, you know, are, are, are people with whom they might want to begin a, a dialogue. Uh, I'm a Republican, so. Uh, uh, Sam Bankman-Fried did not uh, contribute uh, 
uh, to uh, uh, to my campaign, and you know, I'm you know, kind of breathing a sigh of relief there. Uh, <laughs> I, I think we found. Uh, uh, I think we did find a contribution uh, from someone affiliated with FTX in one of our uh, campaign accounts that we returned uh, because we don't we we don't want to create an appearance uh, that he's had uh, more influence. Uh, on our efforts than anyone else has. Uh, and I meet with lots of people who are innovating uh, in this space because I want to make sure that they continue to innovate in the United States. Uh, I want to make sure uh, that we're not impeding uh, innovation at the same time that we adequately regulate these entities. So uh, it's important that we meet with people in the industry um, um, but it's also important that, that any one entity not have its hand on the scale uh, in a manner that favors them and disfavors other people. Now, in the case of FTX, I think that happened. I think they did put their hand on the scale. I think they did advocate for uh, a uh, regulatory environment that would allow them to do things like, you know, continue to rehypothecate, lending, lending the same assets over and over and and, and uh, bundling uh, responsibilities that uh, did not allow uh, consumers adequate protection. And so um, I think that's the lesson learned from FTX uh, is, you know, don't let any single company uh, have a um, advantage. Uh, in terms of the manner in which it uh, weighs in uh, on on this legislation. And, and how much was his donation to you? I don't even know, uh, because I'm not sure it was made by Sam. It, it might have been made by an associate of his. Uh, and I don't know whether it was to my leadership pack. I think it was to my leadership pack. Um, so uh, we went back and looked to, to see if there was anything. There was uh, and someone who was affiliated with Sam who I think had contributed and we, we returned the money. Uh, we don't want to create a, an appearance of uh, favoritism. Well, Senator, what, when can we expect to get some regulatory clarity for crypto overall? 2023. 2023. All right. When in 2023 are we thinking first quarter, <laughs> second quarter? <laughs> well, I know that I know that uh, um, Senator Gillibrand and I uh, hope that in January uh, we'll be able to start uh, carving up our bill uh, among the committees of jurisdiction. Our bill is quite comprehensive. It covers uh, stable coins. Uh, cryptocurrencies that are commodities, cryptocurrencies that are securities, uh, ancillary entities. It covers um, uh, doing a study of uh, CDBC. It, uh, and it also covers some cybersecurity uh, protections. So uh, that brings in four different committees of jurisdiction. Uh, and uh, so each, each of these um, components of the bill, they're almost like chapters, uh, was written so they could be broken up and sent to different committees. They could stand alone. They could pass in pieces and not be dependent upon each other uh, to have the whole uh, puzzle to function. So uh, we're hoping that'll begin in uh, 2023. Uh, the bill is currently in uh, the Finance Committee. Uh, Ron Wyden chairs it. I visit uh, frequently with Ron Wyden. Uh, and he's very interested in this subject. Uh, so we'll begin uh, at the beginning of 2023 uh, to start breaking this bill up and send it to the committees of jurisdiction and then really, really push uh, for comprehensive legislation. Now, you've also got the House that'll be in Republican hands. Uh, it appears that Patrick Henry will be the chairman of the House Financial Services Committee. He too, has an interest in this and is very knowledgeable. Uh, and so uh, he and I have met, uh, our staffs work uh, closely so we can keep each other abreast uh, of what's going to move first and how it's going to look. Uh, and so um, there will be, I think, pretty close uh, coordination and work on this between the House and the 
Senate committees of jurisdiction, even though um, the House and the Senate are controlled by different parties. In fact, that might be beneficial in this bill because uh, cryptocurrency is, the, one of the great things about it is it's pretty nonpartisan. Um, the, both parties have an interest in addressing these issues. Uh, it doesn't get into, uh, in, is at least not in my experience, uh, matters that are create philosophical divides between Democrats and Republicans. And, and Senator Gillibrand and I have uh, worked extremely well, closely. Our staffs work well and closely. Uh, and so uh, the, the, there is no partisan um, spin, acrimony, uh, divisiveness. Um, I, that's what's so great about this subject. It is. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Senator, for joining me today. It was my pleasure. Um, I hope your program's enormously successful. Oh.